Okay, so uh, today's class, if you will, I don't even know if we'll be able to call it that, but creative use of Comfy UI. Um, now, some of the things I've heard from a lot of people going from A11.11 to Comfy is like lack of control, um, or I guess lack of creativity or creative input. Um, and that's, and I'll, and you know, unpopular opinion, I'll kind of agree to a, a certain point there too. Um, because if you're, if you're wanting to impaint every little aspect of your picture, um, image to image several times over, try different seeds out for that image to image, you're probably going to be better off in A1111. Um, I don't think that's super disputed. Maybe some people have some workflows in Comfy that work really well for that, but I haven't really seen any. Uh, and I've, I've tried in painting once and I almost threw myself out the window. It was, it was not that great of an experience here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and here's the deal. Now let me finish. Um, now with that being said, I think it flexes different creative muscles, at least for me, um, for me and, and I'm a little weird for me, art has always been kind of like a, uh, a problem that needs to be solved and the satisfaction you get when the art is finished is you solved the problem and that's why i like ai art so much um some people have a different view of art and the whole process and you know that's all great um because I, I i kind of get that way too um but with comfy you get to go full problem solver mode while getting a cool picture out of it and that's kind of why i like comfy a whole lot more than automatic um so I, I've a lot of the problem solving is is creativity and how I'm achieving that is finding new <laughs> new problems to solve constantly. Um, I used to what we're going to be going over today, uh, just to give an idea, is I have this automatic face in painter. If you're not if you're not like super picky on how the face turns out in like a automatic in paint, um, then this is kind of a cool thing to do because the way I have it set up at least is most of the time, the face is the best part of the picture. Everything else can be trash. If it's going to be a bad picture, the face is usually not the problem. Um, so it's worked out real well for me. So I'm going to show you guys how to build it. Um, and then let me go over a couple of other things. So this will require uh, the Woz node suite. Uh, good old Wazzy Woz. If you haven't gotten it, F, uh, there's those links in the classes channel um as well as so a link to the github for Woznode suite and then the uh the node manager i haven't got that myself but i really need to because i need to install more nodes um but i'll put those in the youtube video as well if anybody's watching this later um so let's go ahead and get started now i'm gonna be uh i'm not i'm not gonna be pulling up the side menu and doing this, I'm going to tell you what to search because I don't even know where I find some of these nodes. I just double click and search them. So uh, we're going to be doing that today. Uh, so to start off, here's here's my setup here. Uh, just kind of the similar thing to what we looked at last time and what, you know, most the basic start of a 768 upscaled to 1024. That's kind of what I usually work with. Um, I actually have Bard's model in here. Um, really good stuff. Can't wait for it to be released. Um, I'm sure he'll post it on his Mastodon too, um, as soon as it's published. So, um, so yeah, just a 768 upscale 1.333, uh, and that's going to be 1024. And then that's upscaled to a 2048 by 2048. Um, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But first, uh, as far as finding the face automatically, that was something that I was always struggling with. With the Woznode suite, look up, it's called Clip Seg Masking. So this will let you will let you basically select a mask area by a prompt. So for this case, I'm going to go face. Um that's, and this is the first of a lot of nodes we're about to introduce here. Um, but this will basically use clip to detect the face. And and what I want to try later is we'll probably try bread or hat, anything like that, and see if it inpaints 
or masks that area well enough too because it's it's really cool um it detects the closest face or if it's got noticeable faces in the mid background it'll just widen the scope of the uh, of the mask which is really cool so i can basically just have this running and if a, if an auto prompt spits out a group of a group of people it'll just upscale basically that entire group um so you have your clip seg masking um now what it's going to do there's been i'm looking at my uh i'm looking at my current workflow i have image to contrast mask because i think clip seg outputs the mask funny let me do this um just to see mask to image I want to see what the mask spits out. So you connect that up to the mask. We're going to go preview. So I want to see what this thing spits out. And I have this image set on a fixed um, seed. So it's only going to spit out this, which means I run that. It's going to clip seg. And there we go. So it picked up the face there. Um, so actually, that looks exactly like what I need. So I'm going to just bring this guy down here. I'm going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to test something. Um, no. No, I remember why I did it this way. Forget that. We're going to go image to contrast. Basically, it's going to spit out um, what I found is when uh, I do just the regular mask, it spits out the inverse of what I need. And also the uh, threshold being uh, the ability to adjust your threshold to make it a little bit softer. I'll give you the guys the exact settings here. What's that Sonic for? Am I going too fast? You can watch on YouTube and play it uh <laughs> point 0.5 speed so for the for the face i find that this is just my settings i'm just copying them because they've worked for thousands of pictures oh okay i was like yeah um sorry if i'm going a little too fast yes my graphics card goes just a little little teensy fast um let's go and like I said, it's going to do an invert. Well, that's not how you spell that. Invert mask. And these might be, I'm going to mess with them a little bit later, but for the sake of just showing you how this whole thing works, I'm just going to keep that because I'm pretty sure I can fix this up to work a little differently. Um, and then mask crop region. So let's talk about this. So you saw that image that it spit out. It basically had the whole size of the picture, but with a little white blob where his face should be. Now that's great, because um, that's what we wanted to do. But the way that we're about to use this, we want to zoom into just the face, the uh, masked area, so we can only upscale that part. Because otherwise, it's going to, at least the way I have it set up, it's going to want you to just upscale the entire image if you feed in that mask. Um, so we're going to go mask crop region, connect that to our invert mask. And this is where it gets a little. So this, um, so this node looks like a whole lot. There's a whole lot uh, that can go out of this thing. Let's see. Show the results step by step. Uh, how do you mean with the uh, with the uh, masking or the whole process? Oh yes. Uh, so and I'll show you where I add those here in a bit because I like to have that mask show up and see what it's because it's cool because it'll it'll sometimes mask like the hair and and everything, and so you get to see how big that mask and mask ended up being. I also, I just like more things popping up on my pipeline because it looks cooler. I think that's the most important thing you got to worry about is making sure it looks cool and there's a lot going on. Otherwise, you shouldn't be using Comfy. 
how to do watermarks. Mine is actually, I could show, I think I could show how to do that in a little bit uh, after this part, but I do all my watermarks in here because I don't do any uh, editing in Photoshop anymore because uh, SDXL took all the fun away from it. And so, um, but if you're interested in doing some easy, like just a ton of portraits where you know your model is going to be great, I could show you a way to do a mask sorry, an image blend of the watermark. It's been really cool for me. So um, we're going to want to crop this to the minority region, the smaller part of the picture. Um, and I have mine set to 15. It hasn't failed me yet. And then let's see here. This is where I see some of the uh, progress. So uh, after it's uh, cropped the region, I want to convert mask, mask singular, convert mask to image. Yes. I hate it when it's not named the right thing. Then we're going to go get a preview. Now we're going to see. It figured out the face just fine and zoomed right into it. Oh man, that's like one of my favorite parts there. Yes, I can tell that's a face. It's amazing. So um, now it's going to need to, now it cropped into this mask just fine. That's great. Um, now that we cropped into it, it has no idea where the, where the mask belongs. For all it knows, the mask could come from the very middle or it could be the entire picture because it's a square. Um, so it has no idea. So we need to um we need to crop the image uh the original image that this came from uh, at least mine uh yeah no with the uh with the clip seg so far i've only ever seen it do a square i i don't think there's been a single time i've seen it do anything but a square so it, it won't that's at least one constant is you don't have to worry about your you getting a widescreen of a face yeah absolutely um probably not for like guns <laughs> If you're trying to do a gun, uh, like a rifle, um, it'll it'll want to get the entire thing too. So we're gonna crop into the image using image crop. Oh, see, yeah, there's a face one. Don't ever touch that. It's awful. Seems like it's made for this, but it's not. Uh, image crop location. So now I can hook this up to my output right here. But how is it going to know where to crop into? Um, so if you haven't messed around with enough uh, Comfy yet, you probably haven't right-clicked on it and converted top to input. We're going to convert left to input, right, and bottom. What this does is instead of having it be a number input, it's a you could string it right on over to other nodes and i'm not super yet yeah, you can you can see hard-coded value from the big brain engineer i only know how to tinker and this is what i've tinkered with and what i've figured out so i'm going to connect all of the corresponding parts of or sides of the image right on over here so now and i'll do this again is that i will also have this um, in my final setup, cropped into the face. Now it's not perfect and it's not center, but dang, does it not matter at all? <laughs> as long as the eyes, because uh, later on we're going to blend it back in. As long as the eyes don't end up like up here, you're pretty much good. If like the eyes are like right here, uh, you don't really want the mouth to be upscaled all the time, depending on the size of the image. Um, so anyway, really cool. Uh, so now we have that zoomed in. What are we going to do with it? Well, we got to upscale it. Now, the, this is where we talk about some of the weirdness about the setup I usually do. Um, at the end of the generation, I will do the upscale with the model. Uh, if you're uh, more familiar with automatic 1111, that's going to be your extras upscale. Uh, basically a two times upscale of the 1024 image to this. The reason why I do that is because I want a bigger image, 
of just the face, uh, as in higher pixels, higher amount of pixels, and just in the face. Um, everything else, like, it does well enough with detail as long as it's not super intricate, but the face, goodness gracious, it does not look great. So you increase that size, and now it's going to... First, I'm going to go ahead and get a VAE encode. Throw that in there, that efficient case sampler, lifesaver. Um, I'm going to bring the pixels on over there. And then going to do all this hoopla. I'm going to connect a case sampler to it so it can resample the picture at the resolution that it was kind of extras upscaled to, where it didn't add any detail, but it just made the picture like actually bigger. Yes, if you're going to use uh, the efficient nodes, um, I'm going to go ahead and put a link to that. The efficient, I think the efficient came with me, came with what I have, though. That's the strange thing. I never, I never installed it. Is it, is it something that's supposed to be on its own? Because I've never installed, then I don't know what I installed. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and throw a link to the repo for the efficient node because it's nice. I don't think I installed it, but okay. I'm wondering if uh, Waz nodes you linked it. Anywho, so now we're going to get that image, that cropped image upscaled using a K sampler. That's good. And we'll talk about um, talk about denoise because that'll kind of depend on the model you're using, along with uh, the size of the image you're going with. Um, and a lot of times too, you're going to want to find kind of a good middle ground because if the face is closer to the image or closer to the viewer, you're going to probably want the denoise to be lower because if you've ever upscaled and upscaled and upscaled just a portrait of a face, it starts getting real weird real fast. So we're going to go VAE decode. Depending on your GPU, you may want to have this a tiled node. Um, so in case it, it ends up being ginormous, um, you don't have to wait for the VAE decode to switch to tiled because I've had that Apparently, I had that sitting around for a while, and every time there was a portrait, it would take forever uh, to decode. So now I want to see how the face looks after the upscale. So we'll do that. Looks awful, but I think I could probably try another seed. This is where having your uh, K samplers fixed comes into play. If you're wanting to tinker with it a lot, this looks a little bit better. It's like every time an anime uh, generation of Steve Buscemi comes out, it, it just looks like this. But you see the quality difference in the face. And also the ears and the bread and the chin and everything around it because it's upsampling the entire picture. So um, let's see what's next. So now um, we're going to have to paste it. I'm going to start scooting some stuff up. Getting a little crowded in here. So um, let's see, where do I go from here? Okay, so image paste by location. We'll use very similarly um, the values from the crop, just uh, just like that on this one. Now, image paste, paste crop by location. Just wanted to make sure. And then let's see, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to take all of those input values. So top, left, right, bottom. Now, where is it? The crop region, we can just grab those values again. So top, right there, left, right, bottom. And I just got this is where it gets a little bit fun because now I got to remember. Okay, so the crop image is going to be the one you just upsampled, and then the original you're going to hook up to image. And then there's two 
let's let's do this because I've not messed with this yes yet. There's a uh, two image outputs. I want to see what the second one does because I've never used it. This is the fun part. Okay, so it'll show the mask uh, and its location. Uh, this is where it pasted it rather. So that's cool. And now it pasted that back into the original image. It's amazing. He's got the best two jobs ever at once. So blending, I usually have set to three, but as you can tell, it worked out perfectly well in this one. Um, what you don't want is if your denoise is too high, you're going to get um, image switch. Yeah, I, I mean, if you want to mess around with the other nodes, I... Honestly, these are nice having up here, but after a certain point of just thousands, you get to the point where you're like, oh, yeah, I trust it. Um, and you'll find those values, um, these specific values for your nodes, where you'll be like, yeah, I can just leave this for a minute and it'll be fine. What's the node called again? Image, image stitch? Let's see. Oh, get out of here. Very nice. <laughs> That's cool. Hooked up to the original. Yeah, we can do that. I think that's the case. Let's see. Why you know? Okay, so I was wrong. That's going to be this one. So, before, come on, after. And that's how you make a really simple, super easy face-up skill. Now, does this take the fun out of it? I certainly had a blast. And I felt, when I when I figured this out for the first time, I felt mad creative. I felt like, man, this is the most work I've put into. Because, I mean, I can, the prompting's all fun, but this is where I have a whole lot of my fun, is, is connecting spaghetti from one node to the next. Yes, of course. Go ahead and scoot some stuff around. And then we're going to go random. And then what I do a lot of times is I have the uh, I have the queue next uh, checkbox on because I'm going to get rid of that because it's going to do. Ooh. I'm going to do a bunch. And if I don't like how one's going, I'll just hit cancel and load the next one. Let's see what it does to the face. Ooh, beautiful eyes. Very good. This man's a happy baker. He looked so much more sad in this one. Bard's model is absolutely awesome. Apparently it's a mix of, well, I'm not going to give away the secret recipe, but it's a mix of a lot of very familiar models. So yeah, let's, uh, I'm going to do something fun too. We're going to change it up. We're going to go a little wild. There we go. <laughs> That's great. It's wonderful. Um, anybody have any questions, anything like that?
there's always something to add. Um, I do know, um, cause brain, you've been doing the face up scale a different way, right? Yeah. Um, so, um, I might be looking into that as well. Cause I, I want to see if it's going to be as reliable as this eventually. Um, but I haven't heard enough about it and I've trusted this one for so long and through so many pictures that I'm like, you know what, this is one less thing I, I got to worry about. Um, oh, you know what we were going to do? I want to see if that uh, can detect bread. Yeah. So let's see if it detects the bread. Okay, so since the entire picture is bread... Yep, so it masked all the bread it could find. Well, now we're just going to upscale the entire picture. If I was on my old graphics card, my computer would have said no by now. Okay. Want to try... How about this? Let's get tricky. How about his badge, if he has one? That'll be a really small thing to hone in on. Okay, so he's got a badge. Nope, it did not want to do the badge. We're going to try one more. And you know what? Maybe we can we can cheat a little bit. Wearing a large, uh, just say badge. So that it's going to be a bigger badge. Oh, that's just a name, normal size badge. Oh, I should, but also, hey, there we go. <laughs> so this is what I'm talking about, about how close the image gets. Um, yeah, that's that's one nice badge. Look at that. Uh, yeah, no, I put I put approximately twenty seconds into the prompt, and that was also adding the uh, clip encode nodes I mean it could but most of the time when it can detect a face and once it crops in and can still tell it's a face it has no problem saying okay this part of the picture is probably Anthony Hopkins but since it, it can barely make out that it's a badge, it's looking at that and going, hmm, that could be just Anthony Hopkins holding bread. Just a really bad drawing of it. And so that's why you kind of end up like that. Sometimes it'll do the same thing with a face. If for some reason it has no idea what this is, it'll be like, I mean, I've seen faces before. That's not a face. So I'm going to do one more with the badge. It's going to do the same thing, I'm pretty sure. No badge. Let's try that again. Great picture, though. Okay, good badge. And we'll talk about some of the stuff you're not gonna, or you might run into. So yeah, it didn't. It got the face and the badge, but oh well. So um, let's see here. You can't do uh, batch sizes of two or more. It's got to be one. Because once it gets around to clip seg, it's going to be like, oh, 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 slow down. We can only do one picture at once. It's not going to create two masks and then do that whole process because it can't. So let's give that a minute. And done. So not going to do that. Just so you guys are aware. I'm trying to think if there's anything fancy to be aware of with this. It's a cool setup, and you can do with a lot of different things. If you're, uh, what's that? Yes, I do this exact process in SDXL, and that's been the awesome thing is it's way better with SDXL because the images are already kind of clear by the time they make it to the uh, face upscaler, um, and so the upscaler really just takes it that extra, like that extra mile 
with the detail in the eyes. Um, otherwise, the face, like the nose and the mouth, they look fine. Because um, SDXL does really well with most of the rest of the details. So, is that your name is censored in my streamer friendly Discord right now? Is that uh, spaghetti? Sup, Spaghetti? Yeah, you got here just in time. Uh, we're about done. So, um, anything else we want to kind of mess around with? Do you have any more questions about this or any ideas that could help make it a little bit better? Anything that frustrates you about this? Don't worry, I can take it. All right, Coolio. All right, well, uh, I'll have the video uploaded probably tomorrow. Um, and I'll get all those links in there, be in the description. Definitely check out the Wazzy Waz nodes. Um, it's good stuff if you like automation. You're cool. I can share the JSON. I could just probably pop this image into a uh, chat here real quick too. There you guys go. Drop that into comfy and you're good to go. Of course you'll need, it'll let you know what nodes you still need if you're missing them. All righty. Well, I think we're all good here. Thank you guys for coming. Um, hope this helped out a little bit or, uh, gave you some cool ideas. All right. Bye.